Okay, so we have we have our basic sky, we have the basic ground. Now what we want to do is is uh, adjust and modify some of this ground a little bit, so we can start to see that down here, it's uh, peeking through. So we don't want that. We want to make sure that that gets. Uh, set up so that we're not seeing anything that we don't want to see. Okay. Now, some of the things that we want to probably do in terms of uh, this edge is we know that we can see here that it has some kind of grassy uh, elements and we want to basically dis disrupt this, these super clean edges so along the base of, of uh, the building and then also over on the on this edge where it profiles to the sky we want to break that up a little bit and start to show some of the vegetation and, and maybe some of the rocks so the way that we do that is by uh, using this layer mask by changing the layer mask and using and painting in that brush so one way I'll just show you is uh, we we know that we're wherever it's white that that image is showing through so we want to paint with a white brush so we can go over here to our brush menu and then if you come up to the top you can have us a, a whole selection of brushes and one of the default brushes is this grass brush and there's also a leaf brush but there's a grass brush that we can use and we can change the size of that brush to be whatever size that we need. And we can also do that on, on the uh, using the bracket keys next to the P. So just to the right of the P, we can use those brackets to make this thing bigger or smaller. So one of the things that we want to pay attention to is how big things are in the distance. So we know that perspective things are bigger or closer than they are and then as we push them back then uh, they get smaller. So we can see relative size close to the camera is is about like this big. Okay, So that's that's fine and so what we do know is that we have to make the this brush much smaller al along this edge. So if we're painting back here we want to make this thing kind of small. And yeah. uh, right next to the P, just to the right of the P, there's the brackets, open and close brackets. If you change, that's a quick change back and forth. And you can also click it by doing this size here. OK. So what we're going to do is just paint on this mask. and. Oops. That's not what we want. And we can also the other thing you want to pay attention to is how is it how is it uh, distributed in, in the image itself? So you want to look at uh, definitely dealing with that so that you don't have it all like continuously one series, you know, that you're breaking it up into clumps like it occurs naturally. Now the other thing about the brush you'll notice is that even though I have it at 100% opacity, it's uh, not quite fully uh, dark. And the reason is, is because it's randomly twisting and turning that brush, and it's randomly using a selection of colors. So it's, it's cycling between this black and the black, or white and the black. So if I want to make that fully opaque, I would turn there. And now when I start to draw, you can see that it's, it's you know, much more um, solid. But it's sometimes a good idea to, you know, have some random edges in this.
No, all it's doing is painting. It's allowing the image to show through on the back side. That's what this uh, mask is doing. So we just, we're just letting the image be what it is in the background. And then we're just adjusting. And that's why we're painting on this selected mask. And as we get closer, to this building, for instance, we'll increase our brush size. Oh, not quite that much, though. So we can see that we're kind of in a spot of grass. But over here, it's not so much grass. So uh, this is, might be a place where I would go back and use the brush, but paint in some black again. change my brush to something a little harder. Kind of get rid of that a little bit. And then maybe switch to white. And choose maybe one of these uh, more kind of charcoaly brushes and just again think about this as kind of dirt just trying to roughen up that edge a little bit so it's not so perfect Same thing over here. Now I'll go back to my, because there's a grassy area, so now I'll go back to the grass brush. And then make sure that I've got that set, and then just start to, it's a little big. So as we back up here, we can start to see uh, where it looks good, where it doesn't. It looks a little unnatural over there, so I'm going to come back in here and just try to clean up this edge a little bit. Kind of zooming in now. There's some edge here that we have to deal with in terms of that that highlight that looks a little strange. But in general, now we have something that feels a little bit more embedded. A uh, couple of things that we we're not seeing right now are the shadows. So we don't have this shadow kind of casting over on this edge that 
we'll start to to develop that. So now we can we can start to work on that shadow on the ground. So we do that same thing by uh, we'll use this same layer mask now that we have it created. But we're going to create a new layer. And let's just fill this with 50% gray. And let's switch that to overlay. And we know that the sun is coming from this direction here. So we're going to cast a little bit of a shadow uh, over on, on this uh, part. So what we're going to do is just basically uh, start to paint in uh, that shadow. But one of the things we want to be a little bit careful of is not making that shadow too dark. So we want to change our, our opacity of the brush down and build it up into uh, layers and we want to make sure that we have the right brush um, for now I would just use a, a soft brush soft edge so these are hard edges and so if you can see when it starts to gradiate out like that that means that uh, the pure it's going to give you a soft edge around that that's that size so that's really good for kind of trying to blend things. So I am just going to start to mock this thing in and I'm going to copy this uh, layer here. And I'm just going to start to paint in where I think the shadow is going to be. make a brush that's 50% gray so that I can toggle back and uh, kind of start to clean up where I think this so I think that may be a little bit too dark there so I can kind of come in and uh, start to work on this a little bit and I know that this edge is not going to be perfect so And this just takes a little bit of practice and to, to develop the technique. Now you'll notice that uh, shadows, when they are closer to the edge of an object, they're much sharper. So this is where you would maybe go from this, this brush to this harder brush so that you uh, get a little bit harder shadow line along this edge. and then let it start to kind of delve out there. Okay, so that gets us our basic shadow. So now I'm going to call this uh, building shadow. So I know what I'm working on. Okay. So we're starting to have a, a pretty good start there. In those two aspects. So now we can start to tweak overall. So let's uh, create, we'll collapse both of those, and then we'll create a new grouping uh, called overall adjustment.
And now we're going to start to create some adjustment layers. <coughs> so the first things we want we want to do is is just type, take a look at the overall levels that we have, and you, we can start to tweak these things by dragging this. So this is going to when we grab this end over here on the right hand side. That is basically setting up where the whitest white is, okay, where the, the, the lightest highlight. And this shows you the distribution of luminosity of the pixel. So basically this is showing you if there was a bunch, if this was really spiked up here in this histogram, that would mean that there's a lot of black pixels, okay? And if it's spiked a lot of the darkest darks and a lot of the lightest lights. So one of the ways that we can tweak that is by, if I drag this here, the highlights, the whites become whiter, okay? And if I drag this here, the darks become darker, okay? So this is a way of, of adjusting the contrast. Kind of set it up. And then this here is how you can, by switching the middle ground, basically what you're doing is remapping where 50% gray is, okay? And so where that luminosity is. And so if we want a bit more contrast, then we could start to tweak this down just a little bit so we have a little bit finer contrast. Okay. So that feels pretty good. And you'll notice here that it has a layer mask, but it's all white. So that, that means that it's applying that to everything. I'm going to make this a little bit more exaggerated so that we could see what I'm talking about. So we can see that big difference here. Now, uh, if I start to paint in this layer mask, for instance, with black, let's turn up the opacity. I can have that layer mask adjustment layer only applied to certain elements. And so this is how we will start to adjust when we add people and the lighting isn't right quite on the people. We'll be able to use that selection and, and start to paint uh, there. Okay. It's going to fill all with black again. But here's the other power is that as we develop the picture, uh, the image, we're constantly probably going to be going back and forth in terms of uh, making adjustments. So as we new add new elements, we have to constantly kind of adjust where, what we're doing. And, uh, and so having it as an adjustment layer means that I can go back and tweak it without destroying the picture. Okay, so it becomes uh, a way of subtly enhancing the picture over and over. So some other things that we want to do in this over adjustment layer is doing a very similar thing that we did to this building shadow. We can use the same technique to start to vignette or uh, make areas darker or lighter based on, on what, we, what we want. So right now, one of the things is, is that there, this really is overpowering. We don't have, we have some dark that's, that's starting to overpower, but our eye is kind of slipping to this edge because of this strong uh, element. And so what we want to do is start to tweak some of this. Again, let's create a new layer. And we can fill that image, that layer, again with 50% gray. Switch that to overlay. Now we can start to paint in some areas where we want darker or lighter. So let's say that I want to uh, tweak this down a little bit, start to frame our image a little bit more with some vignetting. Uh, what I'm going to do is come over here to a blue that's similar to our blue like in, in this, this area here, but I'm going to make it darker but about the same saturation. So now when I paint on this layer, I'm going to 
get this darker blue and we can start to tone this down a little bit and, and lead our eye back into this area. So here I want a soft edge brush. So I'll go back over here and select that. And then I want to turn down the opacity because if I paint right now, you can see how it just way too much. We don't, we don't want that. So what we want to do is turn down the opacity, make our brush pretty big, and we want to feather in this very carefully and add it in in steps. Might be very subtle. Probably just barely seeing it. The same thing. I'm doing it over the entire image right now. We could drop it and make it make that selection for just the sky. So I could do that by going up here creating my magic wand and just grabbing the sky. And then now when I paint inside there, it's just in that sky. And if I really wanted to separate it, I could then add this selection as a layer mask and then it would just totally cut that out. Okay. So I'm just going to paint So control or command D gets rid of that selection. So if we go and switch this to normal, we can start to see how that selection starts to cut down on those, those elements. Okay. So now what I want to do is, is uh, maybe go in and do the same thing to the ground. Switch that back to overlay, and then we'll go ahead and select the ground. And highlight our layer here, and then let's choose a color that is in the, the range of our ground. So I'm going to select something over here. And then I'm going to drop that value down. And now I'm just going to work on It's a little bit green, so maybe you want to come back over and get some of this. Maybe a little lighter, a little more neutral, dark color. So we've got some basic adjustments here. Now we're starting to see the difference between what we're doing, highlighting. Uh, we can also start to work on that as a separate adjustment layer using that same technique to kind of punch up and, and uh, add interest to the building, add some variation, some life to this, this piece too. But this gives you the basic sets of, of adjustments that we would start to look at uh, in terms of developing a composition. So another thing, another adjustment layer type that I want to show you is uh, is uh, these, these other pieces. So levels and curves. Curves and levels are fairly sim similar, but they do it in a little bit different way. So what this allows you to do is adjust this gamma a little bit. Uh, in a similar kind of fashion, but you can start to really tweak 
how this thing works in a nonlinear way. So when we are using levels, it's doing it in a linear fashion. Okay, and what this allows us to do is actually ramp up how this thing changes. Okay, so this can be a really handy tool to again, you know, increase contrast and, and pop up uh, this contrast a little bit. And you have to be again, it's it, if you work in this, you want to start to think about you know subtlety because it can become really cartoony. So like right now it seems like super saturated, but I like the contrast. So I might go ahead and go with that. Um, but then I might pop up another adjustment layer type um, called hue and saturation. So here I can adjust how light the scene starts to get. So if I feel like it's, you know, I can pop up the brightness just a little bit. But for me, I'm, I'm, I want to keep that there. But what I wanted to show you is this desaturation. So you can really start to desaturate the image. And this can become a really interesting tool uh, to get a, God, I wish the screen over here was a little bit nicer. But we can also sh shift hues, so we could really bump up the saturation, but we can also tone it down to become a little bit more realistic. And if there's like, down here where it starts to become really, um, becomes a style, and you'll start to see this kind of desaturated uh, as a, but with just a little bit of color as a, as a style that, that is pretty prevalent nowadays. We can also use the hue to shift the, the color pretty radically. So let's go to zero. Um, we can also do this thing called colorize. So if you want to choose and kind of give this thing a monotone sort of image, this is how you can kind of build these sepia tone uh, images that become monotone and you would just by selecting this colorize tool here. So there's several ways that we can adjust this image and adjust this picture. So for me, I'm liking this kind of desaturated quality here. And I'm going to take a minute to add an adjustment layer at the very top that will allow me to um, try to correct so that what you see on screen is what I see on screen. I'm going to do that by here in situation. That's more of what I was seeing on screen. So let's see if I take that off. Yeah, okay. So this is getting into this stylization of, of how, how you want to perhaps stylize uh, uh, your image. 
And you can do that through these adjustment layers, and it's all non-destructive, and you can always go back and adjust it and add other, other pieces. Um, further things that we can do with adjustment layers are to uh, do exposure. So we can adjust exposure and gamma and offset. So gamma, what you can do is play around with these things. Gamma is basically where that gray uh, kind of white point, gray point is set. So when we look at things, we can start to adjust contrast in addition to exposure by just kind of tweaking these things. Now, what, why would you use this? How would you use this? I think that um, there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. So sometimes when you render uh, images, there's, uh, there's a lot more detail maybe in the dark or the light areas of your image than uh, that you want to emphasize. So you can make copies or duplicates of your image and then tweak the exposure settings to bring out those details maybe in the dark and, or bring out details in the highlights. And then basically set up three different images that then you can use to combine into like a high dynamic range image. So, um, and you would do that by using luminosity layer masks and just using screen one after the other, okay? And there's a, uh, there's a couple of YouTube, if you search on YouTube, there's uh, just search HDR from one image and there's a couple of tutorials that show you how to do that if you want to. But this is, uh, again, another way to tweak and and develop uh, your image so that you get it looking the way that you want it to look. Okay? And then one other one that I want to show you, uh, because these are all really quite good, and, and they're good for different reasons, because some of these, like I said, you might be wanting to tweak just one little area, like of, of this, and you want to change that color slightly or do one of those, you can adjust these things using these, these different adjustment layers and layer masks so that they apply just to that area. One thing you have to remember though, which is what I got a little bit confused at the beginning, is the stacking of those layers can become confusing. So try to work incrementally in small steps and that way you can get that s straightened around. So the way color balance works is you have three different settings so we can change basically the darker tones of the image, the mid-tones, and the highlights. And what you're doing is really changing the color cast of those uh, pieces. So if I go to shadows and I start to tweak this, I can start to push red. And so the darker images, the darker piece of that become kind of red. Or I can shift it to a more green. And they always, if you want to get back, you just go to zero. So sometimes you can start to tweak this so that uh, you can get the shadows into the kind of color tint range that you want. And uh, again, this is more about developing kind of a stylized sort of look. You can go to highlights and maybe want those pushed to the warmer kind of colors, so we could push yellow, push red. <coughs> yes, yes they will. So let's, let's look at that. So, um, so right now this color balance layer, everything is being adjusted by this. So I'm using this at the very top to basically get this screen to look like what, well, what I, yes, sort of. Um, because by doing this, my screen looks all messed up. Okay? So this is basically trying to show you um, what, I'm tr what I'm getting at. Okay? So by putting that at the very top, that's doing everything. So everything below that 
is being adjusted. Now, if I put um, this curves, let's say, down at the bottom, this curves is only adjusting everything below that. So if I drag that up to the top of the stack, yeah, so if I do that, you can see that it changes. So it's basically going to do everything. The layer order is basically anything here is going to adjust just the stuff below it, but nothing above it. Okay, so layer order does matter. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, so and when so what these are some of the ways the using these adjustment layers it's very similar to how Instagram and those filters on your phone uh, you know uh, vintage filters and whatever that's this is basically all that's they're doing yeah and they have those so you can go into the filter gallery and Stylize, where is that? There's all kinds of things that we could do there into the filter gallery to to adjust these things. But these are the kind of the basic adjustment layers, and there's a lot more in these adjustment layers. Turning a, an image to black and white, uh, this could be particularly handy for you as well. So you'll notice that um, I I'm getting this tint because I have the hue and saturation up above that that's correcting it. So if I truly want black and white, I have to pop it above. So that's how that layer order starts to work. But what's interesting about this black and white, just like if you've ever taken photography where you use orange filters or red filters and with black and white film, uh, you can change the intensity of those different filters and they have some built-in uh, filters that replicate what what people are using so if you use a red filter for instance the sky everything that's blue uh, will start to become darker everything that's red pops into a lighter uh, piece but you can start to see how you know just making that that simple adjustments and that's where these presets are it's just changing this adjustment layer how that popped contrast and and adjusted things pretty pretty heavily well, I don't know what you're saying. Yes. Yeah. So you, you have to be more clear about what you're asking. If it's about a composition, then yes, but I think that you want to focus a little bit more on the pavilion. In this case, it's focusing on animals a little bit more. So composition, that's one thing. If you're talking about whether or not you use a filter to uh, black and white might be the best or may not be the best image for snow, right? Because snow has all kinds of different colors in it based on the sky reflection, the time of day, whether it's overcast or not overcast. Um, so there's lots of pieces. But yes, it could be a part of that. I mean, that could be a part of what you use. Mm-hmm. So you can play around with this a, a little bit and uh, understand how this thing starts to work in terms of, you know, if we increase the red filter, it basically makes that lighter. So just think about lighter and darker of whatever kind of color balance is in your uh, uh, image. There's not a lot of greens, so you don't see really much change, right? But we can really start to dial in the sky a little bit. But 
So those are some effects, some uh, adjustment layers that uh, would be good uh, to, to look at. Let's see, let's turn that one off for a second and look at another adjustment layer that we can use. Um, so here is, again, these are filters like you would put on a lens. And what they try to do is replicate those, those different filters. So these are, in a way, uh, allowing you to adjust some of the, the overall effects similar to, like, in the cameras that we talked about, or your uh, applications. Let's see. Channel mixer, vibrance, exposure. We've gone pretty much over all of those. Um, these ones up here, the color, the gradient, the pattern, you can use those, but most of this stuff is going to be right in here and the first few selections uh, uh, up here. So you can also do some weird things like posterize and stuff like that, but you know those are all a little bit kind of gimmicky kind of pieces, so I wouldn't really mess with those too much. There might be a place for it, but I don't, I don't think that that is really necessarily uh, what we want to do here. Okay. All right, so any questions about adjustment layers and how you use those? So if you want to go back and readjust it, you just come over here and double click on this, double click, and then that brings up the, the, the uh, adjustment layer for you to edit again. And again, you know, we can color and, and use the layer mask to basically paint in or take away areas where we don't want these filters to affect. We can also use these things to create a gradient, for instance, of where they become effective. So if we use the gradient tool and do something like this, Let's do, let's turn that one on. <coughs> turn that, okay, so we've got black and white screen. There's another painting on there. Oh, opacity is what you want. Okay. So we can come in and kind of colorize areas, for instance, and still have black and white areas. So you can start to tweak a little bit on there. You can use that to desaturate just certain parts of the image. So there's lots of things that you can uh, develop and use using the layer mask in combinations with these adjustment layers, and all of them being non-destructive. So that's the important kind of piece of this. Okay, other questions? You guys feel really comfortable being able to use these? Yes? No? If you're not, ask the question. Yeah. Um, I just like to see if you can see the transition between the two sides of the body. I would like to see if you know the way you can just put that in the body. It doesn't make a mask, but it doesn't make a color. Can you just put it down in the way? Okay. Well, you're seeing. I want to feel the water something. This one? Yeah. Okay, so this is a render element out of 3D Max. Yeah, I, I, I put that in there. Okay, so that's called wire color. And you just load up that image. So it saves it as an image, and you just load that up as part of your stack. So when, when, you, when you are rendering 
in 3D Max, and you go to the render elements under the render setup tab, you would choose the wire color as and add that to the render elements. Okay, and then when you render that, once you have your render that image, you save all of those, and that becomes one of those images. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then all I'm using that for is to be able to go through and select each of these areas independently if I want. Okay? Otherwise, it pretty much stays turned off. Are you comfortable with how to get that? Yeah. So just go back to 3D Max, go into the render setup, you'll have common, corona setup, and then render elements at those top three tabs. Go into render elements, then click add, and then you'll drop down a list of all kinds of different things, the direct, indirect, reflection, reflection, transparency, blah, blah, blah. Just go down that list until you see wire color. Click on that, add that. Then you click uh, down and show it where you want it to save it, and then what type of file you want it to save it as, probably PNG. And then, and then when you render the image, there'll be that uh, drop-down list where it says beauty, one will be alpha, and if that render element wire color is in there, that will be one of those images that you can see. And then you save it out. There's a little button if you click save. If you click and hold it down, it says save all. And you just click save all, and it will save all of those to wherever you want. Okay? Uh, control or Command D, that deselects uh, anything that, that you have selected. Okay, and then the other thing that's important to remember about these things are these are think about these as saved selections. So these layer masks are selections that, if you right click, you can add mask to selection, and it's going to add that mask. So that's a way that you can copy that, use it elsewhere. Uh, it's a really helpful uh, piece to develop and get used to using and thinking of it as, as those layer masks, okay, as selections. All right. Other questions that we have about adjustment layers and layer masks. Okay. So let's, let's talk a little bit in the le next few minutes about how we could use these uh, other elements like the direct and indirect light. So if we turn on the, the, uh, the, the direct light, um, this is basically showing us where, where the light's going to be. And we can use this, and usually these are going to be uh, set up as uh, screens. So the overlaying uh, as a screen element over the top. And then the way that, that you're going to generally do it is the opacity is almost never going to be 100%, right? And so this what this allows you to do is to pop up and highlight certain things. So most likely it will be down into this low percentage and you'll also be using creating a layer mask. Uh, and I'm going to assume that uh, I'm going to invert this layer mask because I want it to be black and I want to paint in where I want it to be. And then I will use the uh, brush tool on white and a pretty low opacity to start to think about where I want to, to put, put this, uh, where I want some extra light into the scene without losing the texture. So part of that is coming in here and I might start to want to focus here a little bit and add a little bit more detail. 
So if I'm zooming in here a little bit, and see how we're adjusting this. So I can tweak and add some detail, change some of that without destroying the textures. So reflection, for instance, can do the same thing. But what it's doing is just showing the reflection. In this case, uh, I'm not too uh, bothered by that. And let me let me show you just one other thing. Just turn this off here. Turn off the beauty. If I set this to screen. And I'm gonna delete this layer mask just for a second. So what I'm, what I'm showing is, so I, I just turned off the beauty pass. And what I wanted to, to kind of demonstrate a little bit is how when you add each of these as, as the screen, then you can start to develop, you basically have the image already. And you can start to develop that image in terms, oh, let's turn that guy off. So... If we, if we add the indirect lighting, here's the indirect lighting as a screen. If we add the uh, reflections, then we can add the reflection. If we then add the direct lighting, we get pretty close to the beauty pass image. So the beauty pass is actually these layers on top of one another. And all we're doing is separating out these different components so that we can individually adjust how we want these things to, to affect. So you'll notice that, let's say that I don't really want as much reflection, for instance. I can start to turn down that reflection layer, right? And almost turn it almost all the way off. Okay, so if that, that's where some of the beauty is, that, that if you get some of these things where you're not wanting almost all of that reflection, you can either turn it down you can add to the reflection, add to the contrast of it, but by basically using each of these independently, it gives you another layer of control over, over the image to kind of tweak and adjust it the way you want. And so in general, the rule of thumb is bring in these different render elements and apply a screen overlay. Now, in some cases, you may want to adjust that and think about, you know, do I want to use it as a soft light? or hard light, uh, there's really no wrong answer as long as you're getting the image that you want, okay? But in, as a general rule of thumb, start with screen and then adjust from there, okay? And, and think of them also as uh, being the, the kind of the, the last tweaks to, to the image. So here is the beauty image, and we have basically all of them turned off. So let's do this really quick.
So this that's what I wanted to show you. So here are the, all of them up on screen. And then this is the beauty pass. So the only thing that we're missing is like the shadow pass uh, in this stack. And you can see that it that that's that I'm just trying to prove to you that that's how this thing is kind of made up. So you can independently adjust. You want more indirect light or you want more direct light? Do you want less reflections or more reflections? You can start to compose the image exactly the way you want using those uh, different render elements. Okay? All right. So with that, bring this back down. Get these elements back in where they were supposed to be. Get rid of that thing. Okay. So we have you have basically all of the tools now that uh, you need to uh, start to develop and bring in your uh, mm -hmm. your your uh, different render elements and start to comp compose your image. Some of the things that we didn't go over, but uh, there's uh, links already to them on the YouTube page about inserting people and adjusting people. There's uh, they're not videos that I've made, but I've linked to several other tutorials and videos out there that show you uh, those techniques and how to do those uh, from Pixel Flake and RQ9 and some other great ones um, out there. So you can look at that. It basically works the same. We are bringing in an image using a layer mask and then using the layer mask to change the tone and color of, of a person, let's say, to fit what we want. So here, and this goes back to our, our original example here of bringing in a person and that person is just a, a series of, of masks. So here is a, a shading element and I'm using in this case hard light rather than overlay to add and change the lighting of the person. And then, uh, and then here, I'm using a color balance to tweak the overall color. Not going to be really likely for you guys to see the color difference. Yeah, the projector and the screen are two very different that you can't really see that, but there are subtle uh, color difference changes there. Um, and then adding the shadow and not the shadow, you can see how that changes there, although, you know, the screen is pretty washed out and dark. Um, but look at that, and that will, that will basically show you how you can develop that. There's all of those cutout people up on the uh, render drop box that you can use. Just bring them in, drop them, use them, utilize them, and uh, I think we're ready to go. So, uh, I would like to have you guys uh, have the initial setups and the initial adjustments of, of your uh, renderings ready to go so that we can help you on Friday. Basically, it's going to be a work day. So have those things, have them set up in the stack, have them organized, have your basic adjustment layers, have the composition set up and, and ready to go so that we can help you uh, all, all for the rest of the, the class period on Friday. Okay? Questions? All right. Yeah.